Okay, just give you a minute just to adjust that if you need to. Fabulous. And then if you'd like to come to stand and let's get this evening's workout done. So bringing yourself just into the centre of your floor or your mat, widening your feet so that they're hip distance apart, softening your knees and just bringing your focus to the brim of your pelvis, making sure that that pelvis rests level. We're going to relax the hands down by the side. Oh, I've just realised the jumper that I'm wearing. So we're going to take a nice deep breath in. And as we breathe in, we're going to draw the shoulders up towards the ears. And then as we exhale, we're going to melt those shoulders right back down, see if we can tuck them into our back pockets. Now start to draw in some tension through your lower tummy as you work to breathe in and out, moving your shoulders at the same time, just bringing that centre in to play but focusing mainly on the movement of the shoulders. Knees are staying soft at this time. Lovely, keep going, deep breath in and out. Super, we've got two more. Just feel the difference as the shoulders are lifted and the tension is in the neck and the shoulders are released and dropped away. Good, we'll go for one more. Breathing in. And then out, just drop those shoulders down into your back pocket. So no, sorry, we're going to keep going. We're going to add a heel raise now. So raising up onto tiptoes. Hi, Ivana, we've just started. And then lowering down with the shoulders and the heels. We're going to work the pelvic floor now. So as you come up, just tightening through the pelvic floor. And then as you release, just lowering down and trying to stay as steady as you can when you come up onto tiptoes, but noticing how your ankles try to adjust, making small movements to keep you steady. Three more like this. Squeeze and release. Good. Two more. Warming up. Okay, we're going to hold this next one. So raise up onto tiptoes. Draw the shoulders down away from the ears and either hold here or for those of you that want to challenge your balance a little bit more, we're going to take that nice little glance with the head to one side. Keep that pelvic floor switched on as you swap sides. Notice how it flickers a little bit, draw it back in. Keep holding those heels raised. We'll go for one more head turn on each side. And then we'll look back to the centre or staying where you are and then just lowering down from there. Just give those legs a little bit of a shake out. So hopefully that's got you used to a little bit of movement. OK, we're going to just rest the legs for a little bit, but we're going to bring the arms in. Those heel raises will come back in a moment, though. We're going to take it into our arm circles. So we really want to keep a nice connection between the ribs and the waist here. So try not to let your ribs flare up towards the ceiling. So just feel that difference between the ribs flaring upwards and drawing down towards our pelvis. And we can do a little draw of the center to help with that. So once you've kind of found that lovely connection, hands come down by the side. We breathe in to float the arms up without letting the shoulders lift. And then we breathe out to circle them round and down. Super, same again. Breathe in to come up and out to go down. Lovely stuff. Keep it going. Now really trying to anchor those shoulder blades down into your back pockets, even as the arms are moving. So we're really creating a nice stable base around the shoulder blades as the arms circle round. It's lovely. We've got two more. Keep that breath in as you come up and out as you go down. OK, one more. And then we're going to add a little bit of movement to the feet. So trying to keep your pelvis level, you're going to shift your weight across to one side and peel the opposite heel off the floor. So just coming on to one toe, then lowering down, swap across and change sides. So also thinking about that pelvic floor, drawing that pelvic floor in as the heel lifts. So that's your first option. Still keep that rib cage nice and connected to the waist with swapping heel lifts from side to side. You'll notice as I go across to the side, my hip doesn't hitch out to the side. So we want that nice straight line down the side of the body. We're not curving round and throwing our hips out to the side. OK, option two is we take it into standing tabletop. So rather than lifting the heel, we lift the whole leg. A little bit more of a balance challenge for those of you that want it this evening. Floating the arms up 
as the leg comes up, we stack it in front of the hip. So we haven't got enough space. <laughs> Good. Now you're aiming to get that hip roughly at knee height. So knee and hip in line, if you can. And still focusing on these hips that are taking the weight. So as you lift your opposite leg up, try not to let that hip dip out to the side. Keep those pelvic bones nice and level. Let me come and see how you're doing. So option either just a heel lift or a full leg lift. Looking good. Nice choices this evening, guys. Good stuff. Good challenges. Make sure you're still breathing. OK, we're going to hold this next one. So either lifting the heel or the foot. We're going to do three nice circles with the arms, drawing that tummy or that pelvic floor, whatever works for you. OK, then we're going to hold the next one after we've circled the arms, bring the hands up above the head. We hold here. Or we add that head glance back in for a bit more of a challenge with the balance. Don't worry if you feel unsteady, it means you're working hard, looking left and right. Great stuff guys, come forwards for me and then just lower your foot and your arms back down. Swap sides to either the heel lifts or the leg lifts, hold that position and bring those lovely big arm circles back in. We're gonna go for three circles with the arms. Let me see how you're managing that challenge. Oh, you're smashing it, well done. Good stuff, keep those shoulders set down into your back pockets. One more circle with the arms. And then take your hands up and over, hold. And if you want to, we're gonna go back to that glance. So just looking left to right. Really press your foot into the mat. Be strong through your standing leg. And looking forwards and lowering down, arms come down to the side. Good stuff. Now, hopefully that's kind of built up a little bit of awareness of these hip muscles as we work on that pelvic stability from side to side movement. We're going to work the legs a little bit more this evening before we come onto the mat. So I want you to take a step forward. So I'm going to turn side on for you on this one. So a nice long step forwards with your feet still hip distance apart and the back heel is going to lift off of the mat. We're going to keep the top line of the body nice and long. So you've got a tray of drinks resting on your head, hands on your hips to keep that pelvis steady. And then you're just going to bend through your knees without spilling your tray of drinks forwards. So your weight is traveling down the center of your body towards the mat rather than forwards. OK, options really here about how deep you want to go. So you can keep it in the top half of that movement or you can challenge yourself to go all the way down, grace your knee onto the mat and push back up again. This is a good one for those thighs, guys. Make sure you still see your toes on your front foot. If your toes are disappearing, you're just coming a little bit too far forward. So think about that tray of drinks that's resting on your head. Good, Helen, lovely. Well done, Sue. Bit of a balance challenge, that's it. Pop your arms out to the side if needs be. Isabella Vana looking strong. Well done. Keep it going, Paula Muna, wherever you are. Good stuff. Okay, we're going to add the arms in if you can. If you need them for balance, leave them where they are. Otherwise, we're going to take it into our done waiter. So elbows pressed in at the waist. And then we separate the hands as we open, as we lower, sorry. And then bring the hands back together as we lift. Good stuff. Keep the, that head stacked over those shoulders and those shoulders stacked over those hips. Nice, straight line, even down. So when you finish, you've got straight line, shoulder, Hip, knee, yeah, we're not here, we're here. So got four more, you should be really feeling it now, mainly in the back leg. If you're getting that load through the center of your body, your back leg is working incredibly hard. So we've got two more, and then we're gonna hold the next one. So go as low as you feel happy to. Hold here, we're gonna take it into our Cleopatra. Draw the tummy to the spine as we stretch the hands away. We've got six of these, out and in. Five, I know those legs are shaking now, they should be four. If they're not, go a bit lower. Three, keep breathing, two, and one. Lovely, come back in and slowly push yourself up to stand. 
and swap those feet over one in front of the other second side let's go straight into it now so we really know all our focus points back heel lifted nice stacked posture nice and long begin with your hands on your hips so you can just make sure that your pelvis is resting level Try to keep your tailbone tucked underneath as well. And you get a little bit of a stretch through the front of that back thigh. Super, let me see you going when you're ready. You can add that done weighter back in, elbows pressed in at the waist and separating the hands, squeezing the shoulder blades together as you go backwards ever so gently, well done. That's it, Sue. So when you come down, hands out. And when you come up, hands in. You've got it. <laughs> it's my fault because I wasn't showing you. Good. Keep it going. We're going to try and get a bit of an equal amount. So we'll do four more. And then we're going to go for that burn as we hold. This is where we get strong. So enjoy it. Hold your next one. Go as deep as you can. Draw your tummy towards your spine. Exhale as you lengthen. Inhale to close down. Six of these. Six. Good. Five. Should be feeling a bit harder second time around. Those legs are wobbling. Four. Three. You can do it. Tell yourself you can do it. Join back in when you're ready. Two. And one good stuff come back up to stand and just give those legs a little bit of a shake out yeah should be feeling that all around here okay we'll just do one roll down just to loosen the spine off so really take your time with it this evening and then we'll come down onto the mat so just starting nice and tall wherever you want to begin to slowly roll down through the bones of your spine Got a lot of blood pumping through those legs so they should have loosened off a little bit from that but just take it easy i want you to go super slow with this peeling down through the bones of the spine letting the back of the neck relax the arms are hanging loosely off the shoulders the knees are just Gently bending to allow you to hang over the legs. And then when you get to that bottom point where you're kind of feeling a comfortable stretch, just pause for a moment and breathe deeply. Oh, lovely. Getting a little bit more weight into the front of your feet if you can. And then bending your knees. And bringing yourself down onto your mats. We're going to set up in our rest position. So I'll just give you a moment if you need to adjust your cameras. Or adjust yourself in your room. Okay, so beginning with our resting position, but not a lot of resting gets done here. Let's just start with some pelvic tilts. Knees are bent, feet hip distance apart. The knees are in line with the hips. And we're just gently pressing the small of the back into the mat and easing away, feeling that pressure build up through the back and then just letting it arch off that spine. Lovely. Now I'm going to show you two options. We're all going to work with our right leg, okay? First option is just the right leg alone. Second option is to hold the left leg in a tabletop as the right leg does all the work. So you're either just going to be working one leg, or you're going to be working the right leg with the tabletop. So choose, choose your option. You can always kind of choose the tabletop and then if it becomes too intense, you can just lower it down and carry on with the right leg and then we'll swap over. So I'll kind of just keep showing you the two options in between. So you've set your rest position up. You've got a little gap in the small of your back. You're going to breathe in to prepare, float your leg into tabletop position, and we're going to take it into our one leg stretch. So as we exhale, we lengthen the foot away from us, squeeze the thigh so that the knee is straight, and then we inhale and fold the knee back over the hip. So lengthen with the breath out and fold back in 
within in house. So nice, fairly straightforward, yeah? We all know our one leg stretch. So your second option, if you're quite happy with this, is to keep going with that one leg stretch, but just hold your left leg in a tabletop position. So a little bit more demanding on the abs here, a little bit more load from the back. So only bring that second leg in. If you can manage the leg lengthening without letting the back arch away from the mat. So keep that constant pressure of your lower back on the sponge. And you can always kind of dip in and out of that second tabletop if it becomes too intense or oh, lovely. Got some really good tabletops here. Make sure those knees are stacked directly over your hips and that they don't start to kind of come in towards you as you start to tire. Fantastic. So I'm going to keep you going with those. Breathing out as you lengthen and in as you fold. You've got three more. Leg stretch on the right, out and in. Remember the left leg can come down onto the mat if it tires. Two more. And hold the next one. So you're going to imagine now your right leg is a pencil and you're going to draw a line down the wall in front of you without letting your back lift off of the mat. Take it as long as you can and then you're going to trace that line back up. So you should really feel your tummy's engaging with the weight of the leg. Now, if that feels too much in the double tabletop, take that left leg down to the mat and just work on that right leg. It's still the same muscle groups, but I'd rather you do it with nice control. It's all about what's going on in the small of your back. If you're really finding the lower your leg goes, the back is just arching away from the mat. It's probably a bit too much for you. So just bring that foot down or just don't take the moving leg quite so deep. You can make your line of your pencil a little bit shorter. Let me come and see how you're doing with those. You're gonna feel this in your tummy. So take a little rest when you need to. That looks like a good option, Sue, well done. You've got three more lines with those pencils, good. Squeeze that thigh for me, Helen, get that knee as straight as you can, better. Super, looking good, Isabel, just watch that left table top, just take it a bit further away from you. That's it. Lovely straightening on that right side of Anna. Okay, you're gonna take that right leg and you're gonna lower it as far down as you can and you're gonna hold that position. Left leg can be lifted or lowered, but we're gonna add hundreds of arms. So pulse the arms, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Super, now you can rest and you can give your knees a good hug. Good work, everyone. So it seemed like you were kind of taking options as you felt able to. So you can try that again on the opposite side. So now we know we're going to be kind of building up through the sequence. Try not to let that put you off, though. So when you're ready, back to rest position. Fold your left leg now into tabletop. OK, so option one, knee stacked over hip. When we lengthen that leg, really squeeze your thigh. So if you can get your leg as straight as you can before you fold back in. Breath out, send that foot away from you and a breath in to come back to tabletop. OK, second leg could be lifted in tabletop if you want to. It doesn't have to stay there. So why don't you give it a try for a few until you can't hold that position anymore? Real good abdominal strength builder. It's going to build up our core strength, help us with our backs and everything, really. As soon as we kind of build a nice strong core, everything else just works beautifully around it. Looking good, guys. Really nice. OK, three more like this. Then it gets a bit harder, doesn't it? So enjoy these three. Two. And then we're going to lengthen. And then we're going to lift and lower. So lowering the foot down to the mat, maybe just just above and then coming back up again drawing a straight line with your pencil down to the floor and then tracing that straight line back up again. So you could be here or you could bring that foot back down again. Still working hard. You've got that sponge in the small of your back. I would press a little bit more on your sponge for this kind of activity. You can afford to squash your sponge a touch more. It's probably going to help you engage those tummy muscles. Good. Keep it going up and down. Nice and strong. Well done. Good. Second time round is always a bit more tiring. So bring that foot down if you need to. Okay, we've got three more. Lift them lower. 
two more. Then lower and hold and add those hundreds arms when you're ready. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Great work, everyone. Bring your knees towards you and hug them nice and tightly and just have a breather for a moment. So we're way over halfway. I feel like we're flying through this evening's class. So we're gonna come onto our sides now, give the tummies a break and go back to those hips. So you're gonna set yourself up in side lying with your knees bent, feet, hips and spine all in line as if you were lying against a wall and you've been gently stuck to the wall. So we want a nice long um, pelvis on this top side. So we're gonna just press the pelvis away from the um, rib cage lengthening the top line of the body to create a little gap between you and the mat. Just give you a moment. Somebody's giving their camera a little bit of an adjust. There we go. Okay, so we're going to start with a clam. Options are clam level one, which is where our feet stay gently pressed on the mat, or clam level two, where we float the feet off the mat. Okay, so you're either here, or here, I'll dip in and out of both options to keep you in check with those, okay. So that tray of drinks that was resting on our head earlier, we've got one of those drinks now, and we're gonna place it on our top hip. Now, if you don't feel like you need this hand to support you, I'd suggest popping it on your hip so that when you're lifting your top knee up towards the ceiling, you're monitoring to make sure that you're not spilling backwards. So if you're starting to notice that your, your pelvis wants to kind of rotate upwards and backwards, you're using the muscles in your back rather than the muscles in your bottom. So we're really trying to isolate that. I'll just show you what that looks like in your level two clams. The same idea, but the feet are lifted. So you've got the inside border of the feet gently pressed together. Breathing out to come up. You can use that nice pelvic floor connection as you lift that knee. Looking good, nice positioning everyone. Okay, we're gonna layer up on this one as well. So take your rests when you need to, but after your next clam, we're gonna take it into our one leg kick again. So this time we bring the knee up, we hold the knee where it is, and then we just kick the foot to the corner of the room, squeeze the thigh, and then press the feet back together. Keep the knee lifted as we lengthen, and close. Okay, so you could be here in your level one clam, working exactly the same muscle group. So don't worry if you need those feet on the mat, or you could be here. Don't forget that pelvic floor, good opportunity to work it. Six more nice long kicks to the corners of the room. You should be really feeling that nice glow building up in the outside of the top of your thigh. Liking what I'm seeing, looking good. Forgot to count, go for three more. Now you're gonna see a similarity now in what we just did with our ab sequence. We're gonna add our lift and lower with our legs. So you've got that long kick point into the top of the ceiling. You're gonna draw a stripe of paint down towards the floor and then back up again. So we're lifting and lowering, but we've changed the angle of the hip. So if you look down at your leg, it should sort of feel like it's on a bit of a diagonal line to where your body is. So it's not in line with your body. It's kind of just out in front. Okay, so you've either got the bottom foot on the mat or the bottom foot's lifted. It should feel quite hard to kick that leg high, especially when you bring it back up from being down on the mat. You've got four more of those. I hope they feel delicious. Oh, great facials, everyone. Three more, two more, and one more, lovely. Slowly come down and just give that hip a little bit of a pat. Good luck to those of you who are coming on Thursday. I think that might be a tough one to do twice in a week. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna go straight onto the opposite side to make sure we fit our second side in. So just swing yourself around on your mat or just roll over, whatever works for you. And we go again. So we're just gonna set up for our clam, okay? So knees bent, feet, hips and spine all in line. Just make sure you've got a good amount of support for your head 
Um, I noticed um, some of you were using pillows, which is really good. Or you can just support your head on your arm. Lengthening through that top hip so you've got that little gap underneath your waist. Every now and then on this side, just check in on that gap and make sure you haven't completely squashed it. Okay, feet together, clam level one, knee lifts up and then lowers down. Drawing in through the pelvic floor as we lift and then as we lower, release. Okay, option two with the feet lifted and lower, good. Now again, it's always harder on the second side because we know what's coming. But try and give as much effort to your second side as you did on your first side. Think about that drink that you've got resting on your top hip. Try not to let it roll backwards throughout the whole of this sequence. This is all about the stability around the pelvis as we build the strength up around the hip. Can we dissociate the movements between the hip and the pelvis? OK, you've got three more of those clams. Remember, your feet can come down if you need to. OK, on your next one, looking good, guys, you're going to add that leg kick. So kick to the corner of the room, really be dynamic with that movement. So you're just kind of stretching your foot as far away from you as you can. Long leg. You know, we don't want these floppy legs. We want them strong and straight, really engaging these muscles on the front of the thigh, even as we work these buttock muscles really about kind of creating a strong connection between all the muscles around the hip and the thigh. So either with the feet lifted or lowered. I know those hips are getting a little bit heavy now, those long legs, keep it going. Okay, you've got four more kicks. Three more. Two more and hold this next one and then take it down towards the floor and lift it back up again. Diagonal line through your leg now. So if you look down towards your leg, you should see the whole of your leg rather than when we're in that kind of side leg lift where we just see the tips of the toes. I want you to see the thigh. I want you to see the shin and I want you to see your foot. Look at your leg and look at how wonderfully it's moving. Notice how hard it is to lift that leg. OK, you've got four more. Three more. Two more. And one more. Good stuff. Down we go. Drape that leg over the top one and give it a pat. How are we doing for time? We've got three minutes left. I think we can fit some press ups in. OK, so we're going to come on to our hands and knees into box position, finishing off with our press ups this evening. We're going to do a little bit of a sequence where we move between a wide press up and a narrow press up. So we'll set up first and then add the presses in afterwards. So you're in your box position. OK, so for a slightly easier option, um, you can have a shorter box or for a slightly more challenging option, you can just have a longer box. Sorry, my floor is quite firm in this room, so I'm just padding up my mat. OK, so you're either here with your weight sort of slightly more towards your knees or you're going to have a longer box and you're going to bring your weight more towards your um, hands. So I want you to be in this box position, whichever option you want. That tray of drinks is now resting on the back of your shoulders. You're going to draw your tummy in and you're going to walk your hands towards one another in in. And then you're going to walk your hands towards the out of the mat, out out. Let me just turn and show you what that looks like. OK, so hands come in. It's narrower than the shoulders and then they come out wider than the shoulders all the while as you move your hands in in out out you're keeping the back of your head lifted you're keeping your tummy engaged and the most important thing you're doing is you're not spilling that tray of drinks that's resting on your back good well done everyone so just in in out out to me is drawn towards the spine okay keep it going i'm going to show you what we're going to add in between so when you come to your in in your elbows are going to bend pointing towards your ribs you're lowering down towards the mat keep those elbows tucked in 
push back up to your box position then you bring your hands out out this time the elbows point away from the ribs lowering down and pushing back up walk the hands back in in into a tricep press elbows tucked in then bring them out out into a chest press i'm going to turn forwards on so you can see that a little bit more easily okay so in in notice how my elbows are really tucked in towards my waist and then out out elbows come wide but still pointing to the back of the room make sure that your chest that lowers not your nose so keep the back of your head lifted that's great sue well done isabel keep that tailbone tucked underneath and keep your feet gently pressed onto the floor if you can looking good everyone you've got five minutes left so should i just leave you here for five minutes <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, we're going to do eight of each of the presses. Eight narrows, eight wides. I'm going to join in with you. Remember, you can shift your weight a little bit further forwards if you need to. So we've got narrow, eight, wide, eight. Sit back to your heels if you need to at any point. Narrow, seven, wide, seven. Good. Go at your own pace if you're not keeping up with me. I'm just keeping a count. Six. Is that tummy still drawn towards that spine? Working your core. Five, coming up to halfway. Keep them slow and steady though. Notice how your heart rate increases even though we're not running. Halfway there now, four. Feel the difference between the shoulder muscles and the chest muscles. Three, you're working different muscle groups in your arms as we change that hand position two more that floor should be feeling harder to push away coming up to your final one very impressed we were here for a while okay after this one you're just going to sit back to your heels and rest in your shelf stretch good stuff giving those wrists a little bit of a shake if you need to as well Just allowing your heart rate to return to its normal <laughs> level. It might take a while. I think mine's gone right up. And then when you're ready, bring yourself back to sit.